How are we doing today? Nice to see you. Today, we're going to talk about my favorite point and shoot. Well, my only point and shoot I have. The Panasonic ZS100. Stick around. Alright, the Panasonic ZS100. It's a great little point and shoot. But there are four things that absolutely suck about it. And I'm going to get them out of the way first before I get into talking about the camera. One, no microphone input. That's no bueno. Two, fixed rear LCD. Articulating would be so much nicer. Three, only one command dial. So you gotta keep switching back and forth for the button to go to shutter and aperture. Kinda stinks. It is what it is. And number four, the body is really smooth. I mean, it, it looks sleek, it feels very solid in your hand. But it is super, super smooth. And when you're holding the grip, you don't feel like you got a super great purchase on it. Those are the four things I think suck about this camera. But let's get to the good stuff. Yes. Uh, so one of the good things about this camera is you can control it with your phone. So whilst it doesn't have the articulating screen, that is kind of nice that you can control it with your phone. So it does kind of you know mitigate that a little bit. So it, you don't have to see the screen. You don't have to. You can frame yourself up in your phone. So that's kind of nice. If you got a tablet, it's a little bit bigger, easier to use. Um, so that kind of fixes that problem. Um, the audio on it is actually pretty good. So uh, this video is being shot on the uh, ZS100 in 4K30, and the audio is actually not bad. So I don't have a mic on it. These are just the internal mics that are recording me right now. So what you hear is what you're going to get with this camera. Uh, another thing that is great about it is it's it's pretty small. You know, it's a pretty small camera, uh, but it's but it feels premium when you're holding it in your hand. I I like the front. Um, uh, you can guess you can call it a focus ring slash aperture ring slash ISO ring. Whatever you want to have it set to, it's very customizable. I, I, I like it. You can use it for a zoom ring too. Um, but I, I use a zoom rocker on the uh, on the top of it. But I, I, that's very cool to have that. You do hit it frequently, uh, especially if you have it set to ISO, so you're gonna have to keep an eye on it or aperture. You're always like or manual focus. As soon as you touch it, it goes right into manual focus, zooms in on the screen, and it's a little disconcerting. But I do like having it there. Um, it's a great trail camera. If you're going to go hiking, throw this thing in your pocket. No worries. Easy enough. You got a 24 millimeter to 250 millimeter full frame equivalent lens on it. So your range is outstanding. It's a super zoom built into this little body. It's a Leica lens, but again, you, you've only got, you know, your f 2.8 when you're wide, wide open. But with this size sensor, it's not really letting in f2.8 light, you would think, in like a full frame camera. So take that into consideration. The one thing that I really like about this camera, well, one thing, there's a lot of things, is uh, this picture here. I took this picture off the back deck of a skunk out in my backyard. It was pitch black outside. I used the flash, the pop up flash, which can also be articulated for bouncing it. I took a picture of the skunk out in the backyard and I acquired focus and took a shot. Now just before that I had taken one of my other cameras out there and tried to acquire focus and take the shot and I couldn't get it to lock. I had it made of focus, of course it's not bright, it's pitch black outside. So acquiring made of focus wasn't either easy either. This thing locked on focus. It was amazing, and I and I shot these shots basically in the dark with the pop-up flash from about 15 to 20 feet away, up in the air, you know, because you can skunk. 
So very cool. You know, th that was a shot that I, I, I might not have gotten unless I had one of my, you know, uh, speed lights on the top of my camera and acquired the focus manually. This thing got it autofocus. So pretty cool. Nice little camera. It, it acquires really well. Another thing I really like about it is that it, um, close up shots, like not macro, but like close focus shots with it. It's, I guess it's not, it's not really a macro camera, but it will do a pretty close focus. And the images are really clean. They're very clean. In fact, I've been very happy with all the photos I've taken with this camera. They, uh, are rich, full of detail. Uh, the raw files are nice. Even the JPEGs look pretty good. So I've, I was shooting JPEG and raw for a while so I could just transfer right to my phone with the JPEGs and, and upload them. Uh, so I thought that was you know, a pretty good option. The, wire, the, uh, the Wi-Fi phone app works really well. You can geotag with it. You can uh, operate the phone, operate the phone, operate the camera remotely. You can see your images. Uh, you can download your images. You can transfer your images. It's a, it's a pretty slick app. It works very, very well. In fact, I, I find the Panasonic app to be one of the best camera apps I've, I've used. So, all in all, not going to be a super, super quick review. It's just my opinion on this. Uh, you know, 20 megapixels, super zoom lens, solid body, Nice package. If you're looking for a travel camera and you don't want to carry around a DSLR or a uh, you know even a uh, interchangeable lens mirrorless camera, just want to pop this thing in your bag, pop it in your pocket, put it in the cargo pants. This is a great little camera. Um, I I definitely wouldn't be afraid to recommend this camera to anybody. And as far as like with the RX series of Sony, with the one-inch sensors, they're Quite a bit more than this Lumix, although I gotta say, these things hold their value. I got lucky. I found this thing for, I think it was like 280, somewhere around there, when I purchased it, 285, plus shipping and tax and everything. But uh, it was a good deal because uh, you see them they're brand new. They're they're still selling for the 500s, so they're they're fairly uh, fairly expensive camera. But if you catch one. You know, used on marketplace or eBay or something for, and it's in good condition. You know, for two fifty, two seventy five, two eighty, it's a good deal if it's something you want to put in your bag and uh, have with you. The image quality is really great on it. I was uh, super surprised by it. In fact, uh, this one inch sensor, I had a uh, Olympus um, Pen EPL two, it was a twelve megapixel camera, and the images on that were not as nice as the images coming off of this one inch sensor. It's 20 megapixels, but I don't know if that really makes that big of a difference. Uh, I mean, I've got a lot of nice pictures I shot with four megapixel cameras, so maybe it's the processor. I don't know, but the, uh, the ZS100, nice little package. All right, you got any questions? You know what to do? Comment below. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Subscribe, hit the like, helps out a lot. Um, if you see an affiliate link, I get a few pennies from the sales. Feel free to click on those. And uh, that's it. Thanks a lot for stopping by, and uh, we'll see you next time. Oh, Happy New Year! I hope 2022 is a lot better than 2021 for you. Cheers.